Chuck Bickle, Chuck is, Bickle yeah. he's out of his brace. So he, oh good. So he's doing well. Hmm. Morning. Uh, let me see. Frankie, open us in prayer, would you? If you would, turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. Okay, so you don't have to text me at home the name of this uh, message. <laughs> Is, are you a mirror or a light? Are you a mirror in this world or a light? And the text is going to be overcoming evil with good. Uh, it's not going to be a real fun message. Uh, in Isaiah 5, and we're not turning there, we know that it says, Woe to them that call evil good and call good evil. And there's more and more of that every day. Yeah. And, and the kids are being brainwashed in college. And, in, and well, they have been for years, but it gets worse by the day. And in grade school. Uh, I don't find that woke in my Bible anywhere. So before I get off on a tangent, we're going to look at Romans 12, 9 through 21. But we're going to start our message with verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. If God tells you not to be overcome with something, that means he's going to give you a way to not be overcome with it, right? Okay. As Christians, we're winners. We're not to dwell in the past and to worry about, he did this to me, she did that to me, my ex, my this, that. Nothing's changed since the Garden of Eden. The men shift the blame. Everything is somebody else's fault. Now, <clears throat> the world, as you look around, they don't fight evil with good. They fight evil with more evil. And the world just keeps getting darker and darker. Now, they think that's right, and they think because Christians were supposed to be meek, that we're weaklings. Meekness is not being weak. It's using God's power under control. And he doesn't suggest that you overcome evil with good. He says, do it. Amen? Now, we need to be open to the scriptures and their specific applications to our problems. And, and you'll discover solutions you never thought even existed. It's not enough to say we'll overcome evil with good. We need to do it. It's easy to be churchy on Sunday, yes. and Sunday night and Wednesday night. It's a little tough on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. It's been my experience, God will put something evil or some evil person in your way to grow you. Because if you do what he says, you'll get stronger. Amen? Not fun. But it's true. Okay, we're not talking about being passive. We're talking about doing good by being aggressive. I wouldn't say going out on the street preaching is a passive thing to do. 
I didn't think anybody in here would argue with that. Now, I meet a lot of Christians, and I have through the years, they have a defeatist mentality. They figure they're going to go down with the flames, so they just get ready to do so. They're not expecting anything good to happen in their life, so they dwell in the past and just figure, well, that's the way it's always going to be. And if you go read the parables of the, of the sowers, if you read those carefully, God does not like maintenance think, thinking. He doesn't want you to hide the word only in your heart. He wants you to get it out. And that includes the people around you. Part of our testimony is they look in the driveway and the car is gone on Sunday and Wednesday and Monday. Don't think your neighbors are not watching you. And I heard a guy many years ago say, I'll go anywhere the Lord sends me. I'll go to India. So I asked him to come to the mission once a week and teach the unsaved because I couldn't counsel them. And he showed up once. So, I mean, he said he'd go to India because the likelihood of God calling him to do that wasn't very strong. We don't want to be that way. <laughs> um, so we're going to go to Romans 12. We're going to start in verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Dissimulation can be hypocritical. Can it not? God says don't love that way. Now I'm going to read you an excerpt. I don't normally do this. Uh, it was in a book by J. Adams, and I'll just read it to you verbatim. A Christian woman who had an unsaved husband regularly attended services at her church. Whenever anyone asked, how are you doing today, Mary? She'd answer, oh, all right, I suppose. But you know how hard it is sometimes to live with an unsaved husband. At prayer meetings, she would always request be sure to pray for me and John. As you know how hard it is to live with an unsaved husband. And so it went on and on. She had built her life around the fact that her husband was unsaved. And it was tough to live that life. She lived in defeat and not victory. Consequently, John got saved. And she was furious. The entire structure of her life had been shattered. And she didn't know what to do. She simply didn't know how to live a life of victory. All she knew was defeat. There are many others like this in the world, and the world is full of sin. But God commands us to have victory over evil. It wasn't a suggestion. Christ defeated the devil on the cross. We know from our Bible, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Well, he certainly overcame evil. If we have his name, we're Christians, then we need to do the same thing. We don't go to the cross and get crucified, but we're to crucify our fresh flesh daily. We're to overcome evil. There's no ceasefire with the devil. That cat don't sleep. Man, he'd be after you all day. And not himself, his majesty, the cockroach. He's too busy to bother with me. I got some 18th rate demon that follows me around, or devil. He's probably in the Middle East or in Washington or something busy today. So we're to overcome evil. There's no ceasefire with the devil. Not only can't be done, but it shouldn't be done. There can be no compromise with sin, personal sin, sin of compromising with false doctrine. It'd be easier to just go along with well, what the other churches are doing. I wouldn't have to drive an hour to get here. I'd go listen to some flat out nonsense somewhere close to home. Okay? I didn't have to, at that risk, rescue mission, insist on using the King James Bible and fight with everybody that was in there and eventually get thrown out. They came to me and told me I couldn't donate anything anymore. I said, you mean 
If I had a $500 check, I, I couldn't donate. Well, yeah, you can do that. I said, what do you mean, Bibles? Oh, you mean you don't want the King James Bible in here? You don't want the other Bibles to be able to be here. You want the King James Bible out of here. And I, I told him, I said, you know, if I call the Kansas City Baptist Temple tomorrow, I bet I can get an 18-wheel truck here full of King James Bibles and have them park out front and get the TV station here. And you can refuse them on TV. I said, you know I'm not going to do that, but I think I could. It'd be easy to just let people teach out of Bibles that know better. There are some people don't know. But we have a, a brother who's supported this church for quite a while, Art Illich. He's, he's dying at home. Uh, he was in that rescue mission with a New King James Bible. And I took him to about two verses and he threw them away yeah. and went to King James. There were several preacher that be, people that became preachers that I did that with. If you don't know any better and somebody shows you, then you need to go along with what God said. I don't need to, to go along with some pagan philosophy today either. That's evil. I'm to overcome evil with good. But I'm not Gandhi. Neither are you. We're not supposed to be so pacifistic that we can't get anything done. We're in the Lord's army. Army paints a picture. You notice when you go to Ephesians chapter 6, there was no weapons for your back. You're not supposed to be running away from trouble. You're supposed to be running towards it. And prayer is a weapon, but the word of God is a weapon too. We need to both use both of them. They put the Lord Jesus Christ to death out of jealousy, but they put him to death for his righteous life. He proved that he could do what he said and what God commissioned him to do. His, his light beamed so brightly that his persecutors wanted to destroy it. They wanted to get rid of it. He contrasted darkness, and it was too much for, with light, and it was too much for darkness to bear. Light is going to always win. You can't get rid of light with darkness, but you can get rid of darkness with light. Okay. If this room was pitch dark, I could light a candle in here, and I would change a lot of things. Amen? Light always wins. Shadows can't drive away light. And most of the dirty deeds are done in the shadows. They're done in the wee small hours of. They're done in dark bars. All right. First Thessalonians 5.22, we don't need to go there, we're going to go somewhere else. Uh, but it's talking about not, uh, not showing the appearance of evil. Uh, go back to our text, verse 9 of chapter 12 in Romans. Let love without be, be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. If you abhor something, you hate it. Hate it. Then it says, cleave to that which is good. We're to hang on to things, to meld with things that are good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring yourself. Uh, no, it doesn't say that, does it? Preferring one another. Not slothful in business. Fervent spirit. Serving the Lord. I don't want to drag out of bed and say, wow, I got to go to work today. Oh, wow, we're going street preaching today. It looked like it might rain. Oh, wow, I got to go deal with this guy at work. I just don't like to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the place where I work at, it's a lab. You think there'll be a lot of intelligent people there, but uh, there's a lot of people in that building going to die with terminal ignorance. And some dude... Last Friday, put what looked like a big giant dog turd right in front of the door as you go into the lab. So they were screeching and whip. So I picked it up with a shovel and threw it in the woods. Caused this big to-do over there, and the lady, big shot from the front, comes out. She says, 
Guido, had you seen that big turd? I said, yeah. <laughs> she says, what'd you do with it? I says, I threw it in the woods. I don't have an employee manual. I didn't know I was supposed to come and tell you that I found this big turd. And I mean, this thing for a whole week, that's all they were talking about. And, and this kid now, he's, he's a sociopath that did it. They don't believe me when I tell them that in the office. So the, someday he's going to do something. Uh, they're going to not be really happy with He thought that was funny. I did not. And now he's not talking to anybody in the building. He gives you that kind of hates their look. He's an alcoholic or, or drunkard, as we would say. The worst thing they can do is develop resentments and keep nursing and rehearsing them. But that's where he yeah, I got him a Bible before, but now he's... He's not talking to me. I'm probably the only friend he had in there. Uh, verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Instant in prayer. One of the things I used to love about Pastor Kuntz at Tabernacle Baptist years ago is you asked him to pray for something, he'd stop right on the spot and we'd pray. Because isn't it easy to say, Justin says, pray for me at my job. And I'll tell him, yeah, I will, and then I forget. Right. Easy to do, right? Good habit is to do it right on the spot. Is it not? Verse 13, distributing to the necessary of necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them would persecute you. Bless and curse not. Uh, you all heard me say, if I could lose my salvation, it would be in traffic. When some guy cuts me off, and I'm getting a little better. I don't chase him anymore. <laughs> I, I don't make gestures with my hands. <laughs> my wife just took a deep breath. <laughs> if you could lose your salvation, I'd lose it there. Praise the Lord, we can't. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. It's easy to weep with somebody who just lost somebody in their family and you go to the funeral and everybody says, if there's anything I can do, just call me. And, and I wonder what happened if you called one of them. But I don't, never had occasion to do so. It's easy to cry with people. That, but how about rejoicing? When some guy at work gets a promotion you thought you should have had. How about when you've had eyes on a woman and all of a sudden she finds this other guy? Paint your own scenarios, but it's, it's a little difficult to rejoice with them. The guy's in the prison. Uh, somebody gets off with six month sentence or one year sentence and they got one of my guys got 54 years. He still writes to me every Christmas. Easy to rejoice with people that are crying. Not so easy to rejoice when you have some jealousy over what happened. Be of the same mind, verse 16, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. There are a lot of people that if they do something kind for the homeless, they got to make a production out of it. First year at the mission, we opened Thanksgiving preparation to the outside world. They came in, and I remember a lady from Longmeadow came. She says, hi, I Mrs. whatever. I got bucks. Mrs. I got bucks. And she says, I'm here to volunteer. Well, I don't know if she thought she was going to sing or dance, but I gave her a knife and a pile of onions to cut. She wasn't too thrilled. Probably the only time she cried all day. I'm glad I didn't bring up a name. <laughs> Verse 17, recompense. That means give back to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible... As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. God put that in there because sometimes it's just not possible. You pull a knife on me, I'm not going to wait to see what you're going to do with it. Okay, 
We're, our country's working on electric tanks. Can, can you imagine? Now, I'm out in the war, and I run out of juice in that tank. What am I tell the enemy? Can you wait? I, are there any chargers around here? Okay, you come at me and you threaten my family, I'm not going to wait to see what you're going to do. I'm going to take you at your word. And, and I've been there. I've had knives pulled on me, scissors and all kinds of goofy stuff. If it be possible as much as life, and, and, and it usually is possible, so don't always be looking for a, a loophole, right? Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. If you let him do the vengeance, he can do a lot better job than you. He put some little germ under some guy's fingernail and take him out. You can't do that. Uh, and if you get in a fight with somebody and both of you get beat up, you didn't accomplish nothing. You just took evil and made it more evil. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, starve him to death. Uh, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Your enemy's in front of you. You need to start praying for him that he gets saved. I believe those coals are a picture of where he's going to that hell fire. And I used to teach, but I'm not so sure it's right anymore, that they used to walk around with a, a fire thing on their hat, and, and you put coals in there, you were blessing them because they could go start a... But I don't really think that God, what God was saying there sounds good. A lot of things we say sound good. Go to James chapter 3. Now, I'm aware James has written to 12 tribes of Israel and doctrinally what's going on here, but there's a lot in here that's aimed right between your eyes. If you read carefully, verse, chapter 3, verse 8, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Didn't God just say in Romans to overcome evil with good? And then we just read here that the tongue is, is evil, can be. We need to work on that. And how do I get my tongue to slow down while I fill my heart with the stuff that's supposed to be in there? Not with junk, not with garbage. Therewith we bless, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things not ought to be, not so to be. Though the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Of course not. But I profess to love my brother and I gossip about him when he's not here. I press, profess to love a sister in the Lord. <laughs> I hear of some rumor, and I go over there and I believe it. Uh, if, if I'm reading 1 Corinthians 12, right, I don't need to be doing that. Okay? I, love gives people the benefit of the doubt. At least it's supposed to. There was a time when I was a drunkard, if you said, told somebody I saw Guido drunk on Main Street, they would buy it, okay? I would hope they wouldn't buy that now, it's a long time ago, okay? But we'll buy into rumors and things and gossip we hear at work. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. Verse 12, can a, the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs, so can no fountain yield both salt water and fresh. 
I had a boss I used to work for where he had unruly customers. He'd say, lady, you're either on the bus or you're off the bus. Can't be both things. Can't be a little bit pregnant. You're either pregnant or not pregnant. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. If you're in that word of God, the longer you stay in there and it permeates your heart, and the older you get, you should be acquiring wisdom. And things that used to bother you shouldn't bother you at all. And I'll share one other little thing with you. The closer you walk with, with God, the more the devil's minions are right at your heels looking to catch you up. So I'm not going to live in fright over that, but I'm going to do the things that I need to do. And that's being that word and pray constantly and pray for people I don't like as well as those that I do like. You, I don't care who's in office, you need to pray that that man does the will of God today. But if ye have bitter envy in verse 14 and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Now, I love verse 16. Uh, I hope you know sarcasm when you hear it. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. You're not to envy somebody that has a gift that can get up and sing or can get up and preach or, or does something that you would like to do. And strife is when you cause trouble amongst each other. Now, the unsaved world has that angst. They have that feeling of impending doom. And, and I'm going to get ahead of you. So uh, I, I remember Sinatra had a, light, a sign in his house that said, he who dies with the most toys wins. I, I don't think he's singing that song. No, I don't profess to know where he is. But I got a strong idea. Um, Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and there's that word, without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Turn with me, if you would, to 1 Peter. First Peter chapter three. Uh, we're going to start at verse eight. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing. Very easy if somebody calls you a name and to throw right back at them. I mean, what are we in the fifth grade or the fourth grade or the third grade that you can't take somebody calling you a name? I got in a car accident in front of the library at Springfield, I don't know, it was five years ago, something like that, six years ago. And this lady spit all these cuss words at me, told me I hit her car. She drove into me, chased me, screaming at me, calling all me these names. And she's, we're going to the police station. Well, I turned right, I went to the police station. She disappeared. She was probably stoned. So I had to go file a police report. And the, and the police woman says, well, what did she say to you? I says, I really not, 
No, she says, tell me exactly what she said, and so I did. And she called me all these names, and I looked at the police lady and I laughed. I said, how did she find out? She just met me. <laughs> and she laughed. She said, you'll be all right <laughs> through this with that attitude. I mean, can't have somebody call your name? Who cares? I remember that when David was having trouble with Absalom and all, all kinds of things in the Bible, uh, there was a guy cursing, calling him names, throwing stones. I mean, he says, who cares? I mean, we got bigger and mightier things to worry about than somebody calling us a name or taking my seat in church or getting ahead of me in line somewhere. Not rendering evil for real, evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing. Knowing that ye therefore unto called, therefore, yeah, there unto called, that ye, you should inherit a blessing. If, if I learn how to overcome evil with good, God will bless me. If I don't, if I don't take that opportunity, I'm going to miss that blessing. Now, raise your hand if you don't want any blessings from God today. That's what I thought. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. We use a lot of words that are not actually cuss words, but they're substitute for what the cuss word is. And we all got our pet words, and I'm not going to give you any of mine. I won't say hemorrhoid in front of the whole congregation. But that's one of my favorite things to throw at somebody is call them a hemorrhoid. Um, verse 11, let him eschew evil. Fancy English word, it means to avoid, it means to abstain from. I don't want no part of that. Let him eschew evil, and not only that, but do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. That means go after it, cherish it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and the ears are open unto their prayers. Sometimes we may not think God is lit, but he is. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. He's not pleased what he sees down here going on in this country. And if you want to know how to be in the end times, go back to the book of Genesis. That's what the Bible says. And there was no love of God in men's hearts back then. And there was violence everywhere. And if you go back in Genesis, you had sodomy. You had all the stuff that we're dealing with. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. It's reported faster. You could see a picture of it. It's all over the place. And who is he that will harm you if, you be, if he be followers of that which is good? But, and if he suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a, re a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Doesn't the Bible say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom? See, if I'm in that book, then I'm going to learn how to answer people. I'm not going to have that knee-jerk reaction every time something happens I don't like. Anybody can do that. One of my things, and I do it too, is, is before I'm going to do something, it's ready, fire, aim. It, it, it don't work that way, <laughs> does it? Verse 16, having a good conscience that wherein they speak, evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed to falsely accuse you your good conversation in Christ. That conversation is the way I lead my life 
my walk out there in front of everybody. It's not chit chat. It's not just that kind of conversation. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing. Now I'm going to exhort you a little bit. We're going to overcome evil with good. Sit down and think about that. Pray about it. Who are people that are doing you evil right now that you know of? Must be somebody. Is it other Christians? Is it unbelievers? And it, uh, this is a small church. Some of you guys haven't been around as much as me and your preacher and, and Brother Bert. Uh, to go see people that eat and devour each other in other churches and fight over, you know, you're going to break bread, you're going to have a little banquet, you're going to have food on the grounds. And how come they put Mary's potato salad out in front of mine? Nobody could get at mine. How come the pastor got up there and he thanked everybody but me? And I worked my fingers to the bone. Bert, you're not smiling, but I see in your eyes, you know what I'm talking about. That goes on. That's, we're not supposed to be like the world. Going back to what I said, are you a mirror or a light? I don't want to react the way the world reacts to everything. Now they're bringing this COVID stuff around again, and they wanted to have mask mandates, and they want to go through all that stuff that we know was proven didn't work. And anti full of baloney Fauci is out on a, a tour of the United States touting masks. That fool ought to go hide and put a barrel over his head someplace. I wouldn't be out there trying to prove I was right when everything I did was wrong. And God is going to hold him accountable for that foolishness that went on in China. <laughs> God don't forget. Who else is doing evil? Your family? Now, I got a brother who won't talk to me. Sister that only God knows where she is. My neighbors. My neighbor's dog. We have a, a visiting neighbor who comes to her mom's house and brings a psychotic dog. Okay? I never heard a dog bark the way that he goes, Rip! stops. Rip! Stops. Then he goes on a tirade. Rip! 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 For an hour. And, it, and we got these big abravites in it, echoes there. So I, I could keep cussing at that dog. 20 years ago, I probably would have killed him. At least got the garden hose out and squirted him with water. So I called up the sister. I says, Heather, can you do anything? I know you all love that dog, and I don't hate the dog. I just hate the noise he makes. And, and it's not that he's barking. He goes on for hours. It's hard to study. It's hard to pray. It's hard to do anything over there. Can you do anything to help me? And they did. They shot the dog. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but I hear them reprimand it and, and pay attention to him. I think the dog, I don't know. I don't speak dog. He was probably just looking for attention, and they were ignoring him. But years ago, I would have got nasty with them. What good does it do? Can't overcome evil with more evil. You have to come overcome evil with good. Maybe you've got a business associate that robbed you when you bought tires or you, you signed some contract that was stupid. Pray for them. I mean, we had a, I don't want to bring up some of the people that were in the car business, but I pray for some of them as they come to mind because I know what they were doing. When you sit down, don't gloss over the facts. Be candid with you and God. Say, am I still bearing a resentment towards this guy? Evaluate what you're doing honestly. Now I'm going to leave you with one other thing. Go to Ephesians chapter 4.
Okay, God tells us to put on new things and forsake the old. And I believe that you have to put on the new in order to forsake the old. And we've looked at this passage of scripture, so we're not going to read it this morning. But Ephesians 4 from 17 into chapter 5 is what is called in is a put on and put off dynamic. Okay, one simple thing that I learned to describe it is if I get arrested for being a thief and I'm in jail, I get six years, I'm not stealing when I'm in there because it's hard to do. Am I still a thief? Yeah. Why? Because I haven't changed in the heart. Is a thief a giving person? He don't care what happens to you if he stole your TV and the kids can't watch Casper the Friendly Ghost on TV or whatever they're watching. Yeah. I mean, he don't care. He doesn't care if he took your car and, and now you, you have no way to get there. He didn't care about any of those things. So in order to picture this, uh, I'll bring up Jay Adams again. He says, when is a door not a door? An old riddle. When it's a jar. Ha, ha, ha. When is a thief not a thief? When he's a working man who gives. Then there was a change of heart there. Now, this is what I want to leave you with. We're going to put on and put off some things, and please take some of them to heart. We're going to put on love and put off hate. And love is not a warm feeling, it's an action. We're going to rejoice, not grieve, people. We're going to exercise compassion, not indifference. We're going to put on kindness and ditch the malice and the wrath. We're going to put on tenderness and ditch, ditch the harshness. We're going to put on gentleness and ditch the anger. We're going to put on contentment and lose the covetousness and the envy. We're going to put on respect to replace disrespect. We're going to put on patience and put off impatience. We're going to put on trust and don't give place to jealousy. We're going to put on humility. We're going to take off the pride. I'm going to put on forbearance and forgiveness and pass up on the vengeance. Buy your head for prayer and we'll close. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, pray for you, for the, we'll praise you for the word of God, for the absolute standard you left us to live our lives. Lord, help us apply your principles, not just read about them. And Lord, that we have a strong change of heart, all of us today. Everybody's got something they're wrestling with. I don't know what those our Lord, but we know we can be victorious in you. We ask to bless the service and the singing to come. We ask all these things and give thanks in Christ's name. Amen.